Hello. Welcome to Haitian Baby 22 Haitian Baby uh, page. You can add me on Instagram 22 Haitian Baby as well as uh, add me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page 22 Haitian Baby as well. Anyway, I was I know it's like been close to a month since I've made a video. It's only because I was waiting for my morning sickness to go away. It has gone away, thank God. Um, it was very annoying. Um, I am now 12 weeks pregnant, so almost to like two weeks away from being in my second trimester. So my first trimester is pretty much almost done, um, which I'm very excited about. I know I was supposed to do a video about swatching different types of uh, lipsticks that would be good for um, um, darker women. Sorry, pregnancy brain. Um, but I chose to wait only because I am looking for a better lighting room in my, uh, at my place because, um, I know there's some lipstick tubes that you look at the tube and it looks like one color and then you put it on and it's a different color. But most of the lipsticks that I have, the color that is on the tube, like when you first open it, is pretty much the, the same color. And I don't want you guys to see a red lipstick and I put it on and it looks orange so and I don't want to be going like that you know trying to get a good lighting so you guys could really see the color so I'm still working on getting um, the lighting anyway as you can see um, my hair has been growing I used to put like a little line on it not anymore I pretty much I just wash it put the um, if you look at my video where I discussed when I first cut my hair, um, I named the product that I put and I pretty much put the same products in my hair. Anyway, I wanted to come about something totally different. Um, something more personal. Not within myself, but within, you know, my friends and within just women in general. So I want to talk about um, uh, why black women are number one for never being married. Now uh, I believe in this factor the reason why we are number one. I, I am married but the reason why we are number one so when I say we I'm talking about like me when I used to be single. Okay so the reason why I believe that we are married is because we are too loyal. And you could be loyal and that's fine and dandy, but we're loyal to a fault. We think with our emotions, emotions, we think with our heart, and then we think with our head thirdly. So it's like when I was 21 years old, I went on a date with this guy and I asked him, and mind you, I'm 21 years old. I asked him, I said, you know, do you want to have kids? Even though this was our first date, I don't like to waste my time. So I asked him, do you want to have kids? He says, no, kids is not really something I care to do and stuff like that. That was the last time I've ever contacted him. I, he called me. I never returned his call. He showed up at my job because at the time I was working at my college in the computer lab. So he came to the computer lab, he's like, hey, what happened? You know, we went on that one date, I thought it went good and everything. I told him, I was like, look, honestly, there was nothing wrong with you, you know, you were nice, and I wouldn't have a pers problem pursuing the relationship, but the only red flag was the fact that you didn't want kids. And then he stated, oh, well, you should have just said something, because, you know, I'm sure if I find the right woman, or I'm sure you could have convinced me. If a man says he does not want to have kids, they're not going to change their mind. They're not going to change their mind. And if they do change their mind, it's if they do change their mind, it's if they change their mind. Not if you go out with them and you got pregnant and they want to resent you and have an attitude or, oh, you knew from day one I didn't want to have kids. Now, if he said he wanted to have kids from Jump Street, that's different. But if he told you from Jump Street he don't want to have kids and you know you want to have kids kids and you see kids in your future don't even waste your time I don't care how fine he is I don't care if he's Lenny Kravitz because everybody knows that's my husband I don't care Idris Alba I don't care I'm leaving 
I'm leaving. Because you're just wasting your time. Or, especially if you see kids in your future. Now, the other thing that I say loyal is because most women, most black women, they don't like dating outside their race. Or if they do date outside their race, they say, oh, no, I'm just dating. But I know when I get married, I want to get married to a black man. Then why waste your time dating outside your race? But the only thing that I say is, I don't see what's the problem about dating outside your race. Because they want to be so loyal and they saying, oh, you know, my husband is going to be black. I want my kids to be black. I want my husband to be black. But most of these black men, I'm not saying all, most of these black men, they're not marrying people who look like me. They want a Maria. They want a Jennifer. They, they, don't, want, they don't want black women. Most of them. And when I say most of them, I'm basically talking about 95% of them. They don't. And I'm not knocking them. Like, if you feel like me, I always dated outside my race. And I married outside my race. If you always if you always feel like, if you always felt like, you know, you don't really look at color as long as I get along with the person and, you know, I meet the person, I get along with the person, then fine. I will, um, then, you know, you end up getting married, then fine. I can respect that. But it's like if I marry, if I dated black men all my life, all my life, and then I became famous or I became, you know, in a higher position that I feel like it's a higher position, and the only person that I care to give the title of husband to is non-black, that's wrong. Because then I'm just using my husband, he's Latino, so I'm just using him for an uh, image, to reflect an image of myself that I, I, I made it, I stepped up, he, you know, he, he, he's my king. That's stupid. That's the only thing I can't, I can't respect. Like Ocho Cinco, all his baby mamas is black, but when he made it, when he made it, oh, all of a sudden he preferred, I just prefer not to date black women. You didn't care about dating black women when you were broke. Now that you have money and you have status, now... No, I, I don't want a black woman. That I cannot accept. That I cannot re accept. But if, like I said, if you just met somebody and the person just so happened to be white and you married that person and you really love that person, that's different. Then I could respect your marriage because you married for love. You didn't marry for, you know, a certain status or you didn't marry for um, because they were white. You know, I, 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 heard, I, I even hear some ignorant black girls that be like, oh, you know, when you marry a white person, they're your credit, right? Ain't nobody trying to be with a bum and all. That's wrong because you're not, not, because the marriage is never going to work out the way you want to because you didn't marry them for love. You married them because they were white. And for you, white is like, you, you've made it. Your life will be perfect because you went out, because you're, you're married to a white person. That's stupid. That's ridiculous. Your life will be perfect. Your life will be good if you marry somebody that you love and somebody that you want to be with. That's just common sense. And before you get married, whatever religion that you are, you pray and you talk to God and you ask God, is this the person that you have sent for me? And then you will get, and then God will, get, God will give you your signs. Like so many times I feel like God gives people signs, but we choose the wrong person and they want to blame him for it. Like how many times you look back at all the losers, because I know I do, you look back at all the losers, you look back at all the hints. Like he cheated on me, he cheated on me, he didn't treat me right, he only called me on weekends, he, he, he only, um, he only know me when we were alone. Like all these are all these are signs from God that this person is not for you. Like your women intuition that this person is not for you. Because if this person was for you, they wouldn't be treating you like that. If this person was for you, you would be enough. And and another thing that I I don't like is the fact that um back to the um dating outside your race, I feel like these men they quick to say, oh, no, you ain't going to disrespect my baby mama. You ain't going to disrespect my baby mama. But you're disrespecting them every day as well as your kids. You're disrespecting them every day as well as your kids. Now, it's different if you have a kid with somebody and you tried to make it work and then you could leave the relationship being satisfied un enough that one day if your kids ask you, you know, mommy and daddy, why, why you didn't work out? You could say, look, we really tried, but it just we just couldn't make it work. That's different. But... To sit up there and say, because men that have 
especially, you know, men that have, but I'm going to say, the reason why I say, because it, it's mostly black men. I'm not even going to, I'm not, I don't hate black men or I'm not bashing them or whatever. The bad ones is the one that I'm bashing. But the ones that have kids, they quick to say, oh, you ain't going to disrespect my big mama. But the ones that have kids, the funny thing is, they'll drag on their baby mamas for 10, 15, 14 years. You see that all the time. Everybody got a friend, a cousin, a family member, or seen it on TV, or read about it. They quick, they quick to have kids with them, but when they get married, it's to, it's to somebody totally different or somebody who don't have kids, or if the woman do have kids, they take care of their kids, that woman's kids, and stop taking care of their own. Or my favorite is, oh, I take care of all my kids. I'm there for all my kids. You sound like a jackass. You sound stupid. If you got 10 kids in 10 different places and, you know, depending if the baby mamas get along for the sake of the kids so the kids could know their sister brothers or if the baby mamas do do not get along and don't want anything don't want anything to do with the um with the you know the other kids the stupid thing is i feel like um they're in different households how can you be a good father you're not a good father because they don't have a father in the house they don't have a man in the house they have a man what Okay, so one kid have a, a, a dad Monday, the other one get the Tuesday shift, the other one get the Wednesday shift. Think about it. Most people who grew up in a two-parent household, like I did, well, me, I say three because I had my grandmother. My dad died when I was young, but I had my grandmother. So my grandmother was like a second parent. So for me, I say three-parent household. You are used to seeing certain things. Like my parents, they weren't... Um, they weren't perfect, just like any other parents. They weren't perfect. They argued or whatever. But I I was used to seeing two parents in the household. Most people that are in my generation or the generation before, that's, what, that's how they grew up. Now, if you're dealt a bad card and you are a single parent, I'm not knocking you or anything. But the only thing I'm saying about these men, what message are you sending to your kids? You said you you quick to say, oh, I ain't gonna let nobody disrespect my baby mom, but you're doing it every day as well as your kids, because if you really cared about your kids and if you really cared about your baby mama, first of all, you wouldn't give her the title. You would not dare give her the title of a baby mama. You would have given her the title of a wife to show your kids that you know what your mom was special enough that. Not only was she special enough that she carried you for me for nine months and dealt with me, but also I loved her enough to marry her and make her my wife. This is how special your mother is. So that way they don't go, you know, they don't go to school and later on find out, okay, I'm sorry, your parents are married, so your dad lives in the house. Hmm, so why my dad don't live in the house? So does that mean my mom is not married? What do you think that makes that does for the kids? That affects the kids. Now, if you're in an abusive relationship, physically or emotionally abusive, and that's how your baby daddy is or that's how your baby mama is, then that makes sense to not be with that person. But I'm tired of these men, and it's not just black men in this topic. I'm tired of these men having all these kids with different women, and they're quick to say how they take care of the kids. Child support is not taking care of your kids. Seeing your kid once a month does not take care of your kids. Seeing your kids during that tax season is not taking care of your kids. Showing your kids that, you know what, I got your mom pregnant. I'm taking responsibility for it. I love your mother. Your mother will not be another statistic. I'm going to marry your mother. Your mother is going to be my wife. That is the respect that you should be showing your kids. So that way, when your kids grow up, they don't repeat the pattern of having society and having government raise their kids. Because that's exactly what you're doing. Because you can't expect a mother that has five kids who is single because the baby daddy that she was with for 15 years, which I'm going to talk about again, for 15 years decided to just leave her, and now she has to work and try to be a parent. You cannot work two, two, three jobs and be a good parent and be there for your kids. You can't. You can't. All you could do is pray and hope to God that you have a good kid that will not be stuck into, you know, uh, bad behavior or stuck into a bad society where 
you know, gang banging or other or other dangerous activities could take your kids away and turn your kid into a monster where they end up into the jail system. That's the only thing that I'm I don't like now about um some of my generation and the newer generation that that's uh the newer generation behind me. I don't really like that. Um because uh every single time I had a friend that said, Oh, my baby daddy, he he hate with anybody disrespect me and she stopped talking to me because I found out to tell her she he's it don't matter if anybody else call you any name out of the book in front of him. It doesn't matter. Because in the end, you don't know those strangers. Word, you know, thick as stone could break my burns with bones when words could never hurt me. You could brush that off. But I don't see how you could brush off that you've been with this guy for 14 years and he doesn't know within 14 years or he doesn't know when you got pregnant or at least after when your kid become one that he wants to marry you. Oh, he's not ready. No, he's ready. Let me tell you something. If a guy is not talking about marriage within the first year, Within the first year, he don't want to marry you. He don't want to marry you. And I know there's going to be a lot of guys that's going to come and say, oh, that is not true. Just like they said, a woman knows who she's going to give a guy a chance within the first five minutes. A man knows when he wants to be with a woman. Let's keep it real. They know when they want to be with a woman. And if, and if after a year you have two, after a year you have a kid and he's still not talking about marriage, oh, I'm not ready. No, he's not ready to be with you for the rest of your life. So it's time for you to move on. You can move on and get somebody with one kid, but then what ends up happening, you stay, which is why I say with the loyalty, you stay and stick there with the stupid bum and have 15 kids or five more kids. And then when he leaves you, your whole world crashed because you, you don't know what's going on. Oh, I didn't see it coming. You didn't see it coming when you were with him for years. You had the first kid, he didn't propose to you. You had the second kid, he didn't propose to you. You had the third and fourth. He that then when you had the third kid, this is my favorite. When he when you had your third kid, he was your fiance for four more years. For four more years. Okay, okay, Bella. He he has he become your fiance for four more years. Once you become your fiancé, within the first six months, if you're not planning your wedding or talking about a wedding, there's, there's not going to be a wedding. There's not going to be a wedding. Now, I'm not saying give a guy ultimatum. I think that's the stupidest thing you can do. That's the, If you're in a relationship with someone for, like, over five years, unless you're young, like I said, unless you're 18 or you're young and you're with somebody for five years, that's the only thing that I see that is okay. But if I'm in a relationship and I say, you know what, I'm ready to be a wife, I'm ready to be a mom, I'm ready to be a wife. Let's just start with the wife part first. If I say I'm ready to be a wife, you not talk about marriage the first um, the first uh, year. First of all, for me, for the first six months of dating you, I'm going to bring it up. If you always turn it down and you don't want to talk about it, I'm not saying let's get married right away. But all I'm saying is if you're not even at least talking about it the first year, okay, peace. I got to go because you're wasting my time. Men could get, have kids at any time. Women are the ones that are in a, t a ticking time bomb. Because women, their youth goes away. Their ovaries get old. And um, uh, everything for them is in a time limit. It don't work like that for men. Men, even if women age well, Men always want somebody who's younger. Men are always older, and as long as, the, as, long as they have a good job or, or a st a, a st a st st stability, excuse me, stability, they will always find a woman. So they could be 90 years old. They could always get remarried. It don't work like that for women. Because then when, if a woman gets married at 90, of course she can't give any, she can't have kids. She's too old. She can't have kids. It don't work like that when, with men. Because Charlie Chaplin had his kids in his 90s. He had a baby in his 90s, so it don't work the same way for women. And then when your kid is 35 and when you're, I mean, when you are 35 and older, carrying a child, that child could have uh, birth defects, that child could have Down syndrome. There's more health problems to that child. Unless you're like in perfect shape and, you know, you don't smoke, you don't drink, and you talk to your doctor and she sees that you're in perfect 
shape. But my doctor told me when you're the problem is the reason why they say 35 is the cutoff point is because that baby will have a higher risk of having more problems compared to having a baby healthier because you're younger. Now, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, I don't understand how women allow, um, you know, allow themselves, you know, because they want to look at the good times. Oh, me and him, we have a connection that I have a connection with him that I've never had before. He treats me nice. He did. He, he he does this. He does that. He does this. Now I, I I am guilty of that as well. I wasted my time with a whole bunch of losers. A whole bunch of losers. But I'm gonna tell you right now. I got married at 24. I had my first baby at 25. But when I hit 22 years old, uh, that was before I I knew of my uh, I knew of my husband. Like I was, we were friends, but we weren't dating. But when I hit 22 years old, I was like, you know what? I want to get married before I'm 25. That's what I said to myself. I didn't, thank God I got married before. I end up having my daughter at 25. But, um, because I had her early. So that's why I had her before. She was supposed to be born on my birthday, which technically I was going to be 26. But then I was 25. But when I was 22 years old, you're not talking about marriage. You're not talking about nothing. I got to bounce. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm sorry. I can't waste my time with you. No. I, I gotta go. I have to go. The the thing I suggest to black women is know your worth. Don't stay with the loser because like I said, a, a man could take all day. doesn't matter if it's a black man, a white man, an Asian man, a, 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 a European man, a Middle Eastern man. It don't matter. A man is not on a time limit. Now, if you're a person that you say, I don't want to have kids, I don't want to um, get married ever again in life, then this, this video is not for you. But if you are single, this video is for you. If you know you want to get married, you have to want to have kids at a certain age. I don't think, you know, getting married at 18 and stuff like that is healthy only because you need that time for yourself to find out who you are, and not only that, when you're 21 and stuff like that, depending if you say, you know, I'm a person that I like to party. Get all that party thing out of your system, because once you have kids, it's pretty much a done deal. Unless, you know, you go out, like for me, I used to go out once a month. But now that I'm having two kids, I know that, well, I haven't gone out in a couple, whew, it's been a couple months. But um, now that I'm going to have two kids, I pretty much know that is, not an option even if I have a babysitter that's not an option for me but know that if you are seeking for a husband and if you are seeking for that family life of having kids and a husband you are you are always on the timeline the man is not on a timeline because men can get married and have kids at any age they're not on a timeline unless they have like a health problem and the reason why they need to hurt and have kids or whatever but they're not on the timeline just remember this when you're with somebody and if you're with somebody for five years and he's not talking about proposing or if you're not with if you're with somebody for six months six months and he's not talking about you know and you're like you know you're trying to bring bring up marriage see how he acts if he acts like oh no you're trying to choke a brother you're trying to keep a brother a player player first of all when you get to a certain age, this, this whole player thing, the 30 is the new 20, that is the stupidest thing, um, stupidest way to think. I'm not saying you can't look young or, you know, treat yourself like you're young, but acting young when you're really old is not cute. How many times do you go to the club and then, especially when you were younger, and you see somebody that's like 30 or 40 years old, you're like, ooh, like, ain't it time for you to stay in the house, Grandpa? That it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So if he acting like, oh, he a player, oh, I'm a player, you shouldn't be with a player anyway. You might as well just leave that relationship. Leave this relationship. Because like I said, he's not on a personal time clock. You are. You are. And I don't want, and I'm tired of, you know, these, you know, I'm not going to say these women. I'm tired of us women being stupid, wanting to put in the time, put in the effort, because we think that we're going to get something out of it. And that's why after a breakup, we take it very hard. And, you know, they always make jokes that we need ice cream and this and that. We need our girls. 
that's the reason why because we invest too much we invest too much now for me when I'm dating somebody I invest half half I don't you should not give your all to someone who is not your husband first off you should not because they're gonna most men they're gonna all they do is take 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 and then they could leave they could leave you they take 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 and then they leave and then you feel stupid if you are seeing that you are giving more of yourself than that person that person is not for you all he is is a taker all he wants to do is just keep taking from you he's not the person for you at all so just run jump a fence do a car do a cop wheel uh, a cop roll and leave and jet out of there because that person is a taker and a user and an abuser because if you just take from somebody and you know you have the agenda that you're not going to be with that person, but you're using them, you are an abuser. Because they're, they are being abused without even knowing that you're already having the plan in your head that this is not the girl for me. I'm not going to be with this person. Tell them that and move on. If you're a real man, tell them that and leave them alone and allow them to move on with somebody else who is worthy. But black women, or women in general, just women in general, Valentine's Day is coming up, just women in general. Out, look outside your race. Look outside your race. We are all the same. It's not an alien. It's not different. Oh, is it different being with a different race? It's a man. men. All men have the same parts. All men have, all, all humans have this, you know, all humans are the same. Just, you know, men and women have different parts. That's it. It's not, I don't see what the big deal is. I don't see, me personally, I don't see what the big deal is. I'm pretty sure every black woman, when they picture their husband, picture their wedding, their husband was black. Cause like I said, I always told people, I thought that I was going to get married to a black person. Now, I didn't say that in my head that, no, I'm going to get married to a black person. I'm going to meet my black person. I didn't say that. But every time I envisioned getting married, it was with a black person. Now, when God sent me, because I met him in church, when God sent me my husband, I wasn't like, okay, God, he's nice, he's perfect. Thank you for sending him. But, you know, he kind of the wrong color in the crayon box. You think you could kind of take the brown marker and kind of, no, no. Because if I would have not married him because he wasn't my same color, which is stupid, or not dating him because he's not, you know, my same color, then I wouldn't have, first of all, I wouldn't have had my beautiful daughter, not saying I can't have a beautiful daughter with a black man. I wouldn't have my beautiful, I would not have my beautiful daughter. Or if I did, I would have been another baby mama. Like I said, if you're forced to do it on your own, I commend you. But if you, if you had so many, you know, if you had so many hints telling you that this is not the person for you, you know, I still commend you because you, you're working hard to take care of your kids. But at the same time, stop wasting your time. You should not go to work and have your baby daddy stay in the house taking care of the kids. That's not, that's not him caring about his kids because he's staying the kid. No. If he cares about his kids, he, A, he would have married you to show his kids that he's not a deadbeat. And that he and this is how much he cares for their mom. Mom, instead of saying I care for your mom, no, show your kids how much you care for your mom for their mom. B, he needs to show his kids how much he cares for you and them for not only marrying you but getting a job. Men are built for labor. Men are built for labor. Men are built for labor. I have to repeat myself three times because most men act like they don't know. Being a stay-at-home daddy. That, to me, I don't get. I don't get. Now, unless I'm a celebrity or unless I have, like, a a job that I'm getting paid buku money, I'm talking about, like, a million dollars a year or something like that, and I have to, you know, be on a movie set and work for hours and hours, and you take care, and, you know, the guy's the only, you know, their dad is the only one that I trust to be with my kids, then, then that makes sense. But if I'm working at Walmart... Or if I'm working at Amazon, or if I'm working at the mall, why you don't have a job? Why you can't get a job? Why, why, why you, because why you, we could talk, and I could talk to my boss and tell my boss, yo, you know, the weekends, I can't work the weekends because my, you know, my husband worked the weekends. Go get a job. 
Go get a job. You want to show, the, but you know, you're quick to talk about how you're a man. And, no, go get a job. Stop living off your, your woman who has no choice to live off of the government because you can't pay child support and you can't support your child because you're you you are part time not even a part time daddy you you're a you're you're not even half of a dad because you're just a sperm donor that's the way I look at it if you're not taking care of your your kids I'm talking about not just paying child support and complaining about paying child support but I'm talking about you know, being there for your kids, being there for the mother, if the mother ain't crazy, because there are some big mamas that are crazy out there, but being there for somebody that you, you would say in front of your kids, oh, I care about your mom, but then they have to see their mom cry because you treat the mom like shit, you, you're not there for the mom, you, 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 you don't help the mom out when she needs it, if her rent is due, she can't depend on you, and that's the reason why she has two, three jobs. And she cares about you, which is the reason why she know government and sister do not allow people to live in the house, but she allow you to stay there so you don't be homeless. Instead of being smart, because like I said, we're emotional and we think with our hearts, instead of us being smart and saying, no, you can't live here. Get a job. You're a man. Get a job. It's not. I'm not your mom. I'm sure, I'm sure not your wife, so I don't have to support you. There's no reason for you to stay here. You need to get a job. You're a grown-ass man. Get a job. Instead of doing that, no, I can let my baby daddy live in the street. You can allow your baby daddy, who's already disrespecting you every day by not giving you the title of being a wife, and when he knows things are bad, that's the only time he comes to you, but when things get up or when he gets in his feet, he leaves you for the next female. I'm not getting it. Stay, and this is a person that you feel like you can't let him be homeless. But you can't abandon him, but he abandoned you time and time and time and time again. How many times do you have to allow yourself to be stupid? And then you're going to be an old maid. It's too trusting and too much loyalty. People feel like if you're not loyal, you're phony. Look, I'm loyal to a certain extent. If you're not showing me loyalty, there's no reason for me to be loyal to you. First of all, I don't owe you nothing. You're not giving me anything. You're not giving my kids anything. There's no reason. Paying child support alone and seeing my kids on the weekend is not enough to me for me to say, oh, you know what, this is the person for me. No, you have to go beyond that. Pay, pay your child support without having an attitude. Come spend time with me and the kids if you want to make a family. Don't say, oh, I really want us to be a family, and then turn around and be with the next person. No. Spend time with you and your kids. Actually get a good, a fantastic job and say, you know, baby, will you marry me? I bought you and the kids. I bought you and the kids a house. Let's go to, city, let's go to the court, get married, and we'll save up for our wedding next year but let's get married i want to give you the title of you being my wife you are the mother of my kids you are this special i want to show my kids that you are special and i love you like i always tell them let's go to the court get married i got us a house so you don't have to live off the government i don't want the government taking care of my kids i want i want to be the man and i want to take care of my kids we can take care of our kids together so I'll help you pack. Let's pack up her stuff and move to the new house. And then you and him can work together to raise your kids and work together to pay the bills. And while saving as well. That to me is a perfect a perfect uh, plan. And a perfect sign of respect that he has respect and he really does love you. Like I said, you want to see how much a guy loves you? Wait until you get pregnant. And wait until you have wait, wait until you get pregnant, wait until you have his kids, and you will really see the love that he has for you. You will really see the love he has for you. That's why I said black women, as black women, we need to stop, you know, we kick, quick to say, oh, black women is the strongest. No, black women, I'm sorry, we, we're the strongest. Yeah, you're quick to say you're strong, but you're strong and stupid because you're not strong. Every woman has a weak spot. 
Every woman has a weak spot. And I think the dangerous thing is when you allow a man to be your weak spot. Because I'm not going to say, you know, you guys are stupid. Because I have done this myself. I'm an idiot as well. I have done that within myself where I allow a man to be my weakness. But the 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 amazing thing that I am very thankful about God is that he allowed me to, uh, you know, go through that when I was younger. I would hate to have gone through that right now. Right now, I'm 29 years old. I would hate to go through that right now. And to, you know, to let a man be my weakness right now, and I'm 29, never been married. I don't have kids or if I have kids. Um, if I have kids, then I'm a single mom with five kids, and I allow my baby daddy to be my weak spot. He come and goes as he please, does whatever he wants as he please. I would hate that. I would hate that because then when I become 40, I'm 40 alone with the kids. I have nothing to show for it but my kids. But my kids. I know a lot of women that says, you know, I love my kids. But if I could, you know, if I could have had them later on in life, I would have. And that doesn't mean you're a bad parent. It just means you don't want to have the kids by yourself. No woman, I don't care what women say. Unless you went to a clinic and you have like a wonderful career, which most of these women do, you have a wonderful career and you want to have kids and you go to the clinic and, you know, get some sperm and do it that way, that's different. But most women, they do not want to have a kid by themselves. Trying to go through a pregnancy by yourself is not fun. It's not fun. Now, even if you do have a husband and your husband is not as, you know, attentive or whatever, but you're not alone during your pregnancy. Because then, you know, some of my friends, their husbands aren't as attentive as they would like because they're pregnant. But you're not alone. Imagine being alone. You don't have anybody in your birthing class. You go to your birthing class. You see some people with their coaches. It just depresses you. And then the fact is you can't allow yourself to be too depressed or you're going to lose your baby. You can't be stressed. You can't be depressed. You can't let things get to you. You have to count to three. Sing Kumbaya. And how are you supposed to do that? And you're alone. And then you're constantly thinking, now that I'm alone, how am I going to do this by myself? How am I going to pay for this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to raise this? Oh, God, I'm a woman. This this, this boy is, this is a boy. How am I going to teach this kid this and that? You could teach your, you could, ladies, you could teach your men to be respectful, you know, to treat women with respect. But you cannot treat, you cannot teach a man, a little boy, to be a man. You can't. You can't. Just like a man can't teach a little girl to be a woman. You can't. That's why if you are a single mom and if that boy grows up and if he finds another man, he clings to him. Even if it's an older cousin or older brother or a friend or uncle, they cling to that person because they need that male role model to know what they're supposed to do. Because they know mommy is mommy, mommy is soft, and mommy is this way. Or even if mommy is tough, they know, okay, this is mommy, but mommy's a girl. Mommy's gonna, mommy's supposed to teach me how to play football. Mommy's supposed to teach me how to pee. Mommy's supposed to teach me how to be a man. And how she know? She don't even have the same parts that I do. So how's she going to tell me how to be a man? Now, I, now, granted, they will respect their mother and listen to their mother, but... They need their father. Even psychologists will say that will, that will, um, that will, um, affect them. That will affect the men. And that will affect the women big time because the, this message is for you baby daddies. For the baby daddies, what they don't understand is that affects your daughters too. You quick to say, oh, I, no, ain't nobody gonna talk to my daughter like that. The way you're treating your, their mom, you're mistreating somebody else's daughter. You're mistreating somebody else's daughter. When they, when they're, when that, when your baby mama parents had her, they never dream of a life like that for their kids. No mom say, I don't look at my daughter and say, ooh, I hope, I hope he, she got a cute baby daddy. No. I say, I hope she goes to school. I hope she has a good education. I hope she has a good husband. No parent says, oh, I hope he got a good baby daddy. I hope he got a big, good baby mama. No, because you want your kids to have better. You want your kids to have the ideal life. You don't want them to be another statistic. You don't want people, you don't want people to think that, oh, 
oh, okay, mm, there go another black person with uh, five, you know, five different baby daddies. You don't want that. They don't want that, and that makes sense. I don't want my, I don't want my kid to be another statistic, and that's the reason why we try to teach our kids moral respect and all that stuff because you don't want your kid to be another statistic. You don't want your kid, you know, when they're walking down the street, oh, mm, oh, that, oh, she done got pregnant. You don't want that. But what these men need to understand is these girls they get affected. Like they said, a woman's, uh, uh, a little girl's first love is their dad. If you're barely there, what do you think they're going to grow up taking? They're going to grow up taking men, which is the cycle that is doing right now. They're going to take up part-time men and think it's okay. They don't complain to them, you know, you haven't seen your kids this week. You know, you haven't. They don't say anything. They accept it because to them it's normal because, well, when I was growing up, I saw my dad every other Saturday so it's not a problem no it is a problem because it affects you because you think that's normal and it's not normal instead of you saying and they can't see it until they realize that you know my dad not being there affected me but since they can't see it and until they acknowledge that then they will see that that's not normal behavior that is not normal behavior. That is not the life I want. That is the night, not the life that I need. I don't want to be another statistic. I don't want to be a baby mama. I don't want. I do not want that title. That is not the title I want. And I understand that you know, like Fantasia, she took the baby mama thing and tried to turn around and make it a positive thing. Like I said, I'm not bashing people who has to raise their kids on their own. I am actually proud of them because, like I said, they're doing it on their own. And that's hard enough. That's very hard. And it's extremely hard to do it without aid, like the women that refuse to take uh, a sister from the government and get two, three jobs because they don't want their kids on welfare. That I understand, but at the same time, taking two, three jobs, you're, ne you're neglecting your kids as well. You're trying to give your kids a better life, but who's watching them? Who's watching them? That's the thing. Turn on the TV once in a while. You see the crap that they put on TV. I mean, I watch some of that crap, especially, you know, love and hip-hop. But, <laughs> but honestly, look at the crap they have. And then you got five kids. You can't afford a house. So you have to live in a, in a messed-up neighborhood. And I hate when people say, oh, these people that live in the ghetto, they have no choice but to live... You think these parents that have small kids, their kids can't even go to the park, their kids can't even sit in the porch, want to live in these areas with their kids, knowing that their kids have a chance to get shot if they're walking to go to school, if they're just sitting down in front of their house, they can't even do that. Or if they're in the house watching TV, they can't even do that. Childhood BCD is big because... Kids can't go nowhere. They can't do anything because their parents are afraid of drive-by shootings or drug dealers being near them trying to recruit kids or gangs trying to recruit kids. They can't be near them. So they have to keep them in the house, especially if they have two, three jobs, lock the door after me and this and that. And they, they go to work and they're scared out of their mind because this is the only place that they can afford. I personally think that there should be a program that help these mothers out where they don't have to, where they can raise their kids in a safer environment, where their kids don't have to deal with drug dealers, drive-by shooting, can't go to the park, can't go, can't go to the backyard, can't go to the front, front porch, can't do nothing because their parents are terrified because the kid across the street or their neighbor's kid got shot from riding his bike in, in the front yard. Like, that's not a good way of living. That's not a good way of living, especially for these kids. An environment like that, when they finally do get out, it's easy to suck in those kids. And that's why these, these people are sucking in those kids, because those kids don't know any better. They don't know any better. They want a life. They want to get out. They want to do stuff. And if I go with this crew, they always have a party every weekend. They always, oh, I see how they treating them. They treating them nice. They getting money, and they thinking, and they don't see the bad side of that. 
Now, if they had a father in their life, they wouldn't be in that kind of predicament because the father income, as well as the mother income, could have provided a better situation for those five kids. It could have provided a better situation and a better neighborhood for those five kids. But because she is a single mom and she can't pay all these, you know, all these bills plus a high rent just to have her kids safe. And that and that's that's the reason why I say these baby daddies, instead of them being husband, these baby daddies, they don't really care for the for their I'm not even gonna say baby mama because to me I feel like that's degrading. They don't care for the mother of their kids. Because for a woman to have your babies, that is the most special gift she could give you. And if you don't see that that gift is a sign of love or that gift is a sign that, you know what, this is the person you're supposed to marry, this is the person you're supposed to be with. If you do not see that, don't waste your time with that loser. Don't have more kids with that loser where you end up being trapped. With one, two kids, you could kind of work your way up and, you know, People, people will generally watch your kids if you have one or two. You have a gang of kids, five kids, you're not married, you don't have anything. You, obviously, you can't afford to pay anybody, so you either have to ask your mother or your father to do it. It's the only way. But then you have to find a place for, the, for those five kids to live. Why have all these kids with the same loser that showed you he was a loser with the first kid? It's because we are emotional creatures and we think with our heart. And then finally, when that loser ignores you and get married to somebody else, that's when we start thinking with our heads. Instead of waiting for that day to come, learn your lesson now. Learn your lesson with the first kid. Learn your lesson while you're pregnant. When he changes number, don't want to talk to you. At, talk about how you a hoe and you slept with somebody else. It's not his kid and all that stuff. Have the baby. Get your DNA test. Get your child support. And bounce. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They quickly say, I don't want no man near my kid. No man will be near your kid if you take care of your kids. If you would if you would take be, have enough respect to take care of the mother of your kids and give her the title of a wife, no one would no stranger that is not the father of those kids would have to give her that title. Now, they are some good uh, stepfathers, so I'm not knocking stepfathers that take care of kids who are not for them. And that's only because they know and they acknowledge and they understand that kids without a father, it affects them. Because even though my dad died, it affects me. It didn't affect me as bad because, like I said, I looked at my grandma as a second parent, so it did not affect me as bad. But it did affect me. It affect my, my, it affects who I am. And my relationship with men, as well as my sisters, even if they haven't said, oh, it, it has, it has, and it has affected my brother as well. Because those things do affect you. It does affect you. It affects you. It, the little things that you may think that you yearn for, the little things you later on when you grow up and you learn about these things, you later on realize Oh, you know what, that, that is, I did do this because I didn't have a father. Like I said before, a, woman, a little girl's first love is their father. They learn what they want in a man from how their father treats their mother. So if you are an abuser and you abuse, that's the reason why they say do not have kids in an abusive environment. Because if you are abusing their mother, physically abusing their mother, when they have a boyfriend, their bo boyfriend slap them, they're going to think, okay, that's normal, you know what, it's fine, let me go ahead. They're going to make excuses because they hear their mom doing that, and they're going to think it's normal because that's what they grew up with, not knowing people don't grow up like that. This is not normal behavior. But for them, it's normal behavior. It's the same thing. As women in general, I'm not even going to say black women, as women in general, it is time for us to smart smarten up and stop accepting these degrading titles and stop accepting what we think that we're we're just good for
or we're just good to have babies and that's it and let let the other girl have the title of the wife no if you are good enough to have a kid you are good enough to pro, to uh uh birth uh, uh his child be smart enough to ask for the title of the wife if he if he has not which i think he should bring it up but if he has not bring it up bring it up he doesn't want to talk about it he doesn't want to give you the title move on move on don't waste your time but don't also restrict yourself to oh i'm only going to date black men or i'm only going to date a man with a body or i'm only going to date a man with a money those type of things will get you nowhere anybody asks you for a date that you, that seems nice but oh he seems nice but he was white no anybody asks you for a date take it because you never know if God set them for you because once you do that that man can accept you and your five kids because my mom was a widow with five kids and she was able to get remarried with five kids but that's because she didn't turn down she didn't turn down any person that God had sent her and she and she always prayed about it she always prayed about it talked to her mother about it her and her mom which was my grandma would prayed about it and they would agree okay this is the person that you are supposed to be with god has said sent this person to you and she married them so that is why what this is why i am saying do not waste your time because in the back of your mind you've got to always hear that clock that's ticking because it's ticking louder for you than it is for him that's why i say every time a woman get pregnant her life is over not his because he could get up and leave he could get up and walk away anytime he wants he could not pay child support he could rather go to jail than pay you child support he, he could disappear which i've seen in the face of this earth just to avoid to pay child support but because he hates you that bad don't number one these are the three rules that i have number one don't play house do not live with somebody before before you're married don't even live with that person when he when you are engaged the day that you are supposed to move in yourself do it the weekend of your wedding if that's too much for you get married after you get married go and then move your stuff but do not play house. Once you play house, there's a reason why they say do not play house. Once you play house, he gets too comfortable. And what happens? These men, they end up marrying somebody who didn't play house. Who didn't play house. So don't play house. Don't cook clean. No. Don't play house. When I dated my, my, my husband, granted, I did cook for him. I did... um. You know, if he was sleeping, he started on his laundry. I did put it in the dryer for him, and I folded his clothes, took it out of the dryer, folded his clothes. Now that I'm his wife, when he tells me that he likes certain things, like he loved beans. Before, I didn't know how to make beans. I saw that my friend, uh, Jisomo, who is uh, from Malawi, I saw she knew how to make beans, so I asked her. I said, my husband loved to, make bean loved to eat beans. How do you make beans? Because my mom never taught me how to make beans. She taught me how to make beans, and I make beans. Every time he asks me, I make beans. Or I, or if, if I don't know what to cook, I say, baby, what, what you want to cook? What, what you want to eat? That's different. I'm going to treat him like that because he's my husband. I'm not going to treat him like every other loser that I went out with because I didn't cook for anybody else. One meal. I cook one meal for, for an ex. But I didn't cook for everybody else, and I never did anybody's laundry. I never did anybody's laundry. Now, if you, if, if you want to cook for him you know for his birthday or valentine's day that's different but i'm not cooking for him every single day where he get comfortable because he end up marrying somebody who can't even cook who can't even cook that's the funny thing he don't appreciate it he doesn't appreciate it you think i'm gonna appreciate me i i say please and thank you all the time but you think i'm gonna appreciate something that's always handed to me i'm gonna say thank you but I'm that thank you is not going to be meaningful. Like, man, thank you. You know, this person really went out their way and got this for me. He really didn't. No, I'm not going to analyze it like that. I'm just going to be like, oh, thank you. Good. I got a new outfit. Okay. No. 
But if I know the person didn't have the money, they really saved up, they, they use their hard working money, they really struggle, save every penny to get me this outfit, I'm going to appreciate it. And I'm going to show you that I'm gonna that I appreciate it. And I'm going to wear it more than once to show you how much I appreciate the sacrifice that you have made for me. Don't play house. Don't accept the title of wifey. This is what I hate. I used to date this this Jamaican guy. Loser. I used to date this Jamaican guy, and they would call me his wife. And he would say, oh, everybody already think you're my wife anyway. And I would say, no, I'm not your wife. I do not belong to you. I'm not your wife. You didn't marry me. I, I, I must have amnesia because I don't remember the wedding. I sure don't see no ring in this finger, so I'm not your wife. Oh, you wifey. If I'm so wifey material, why am I not your wife? Why aren't you giving me that title of wife then? If I'm so, if I'm wifey material, that's the stupidest thing I think. That's the dumbest thing. Like, if you really care for somebody, you like somebody. It's you know, it makes you giggle and makes you feel special that they're calling you wife, wifey. But it's but legally, it's stupid. Something happens to that person, you're not gonna know about it. The cops aren't going to say, oh, oh, she wifey? Oh, yeah, I, I wanted to notify you that, you know, he got in a car. No, you're not legally his wife. You will not know anything unless somebody else has to tell you. Uh, this person is in jail, or this person died, or this person got in an accident, or, or you know, this person I see you. I see you don't, don't take in consideration of wifey's. Oh, yeah, wifey, you could go see, you could go ahead and see him. Or, y yeah, baby mama, you could go ahead and see your baby daddy. No, it does not work that way. It does not work that way. Use your head. Wifey, playing house. And like I said, the third, but, uh, the third is have an open mind. Open, stop keeping everything in closed door. Because like I said, most of these black men, they have no problem dating outside they race. They sure not waiting for you. They got no problem dating outside they race. That's the thing that I find very um, surprising that most black women, they want to hold on to the fact that, no, I want to date my son my race. I have to date my son my race. But these black men have no problem dating outside they race. No problem. No problem. They don't think twice about it. They don't think twice about it. Because the funny thing is, Men don't see colors until they see a black woman with somebody who is not black. That's when they see the color. But when they're dating someone, as long as that person look good, they'll date them. And most of them do see color and they'll be like, oh, no, I, I, no, I'm, I, I'm coming up. I'm going to get me a white girl. I'm coming up. I'm getting me a Spanish girl. Most of them do see colors. But half of them that are just, you know, dating and they really want to connect with somebody, they don't see color. And that's the reason why they get married because they don't see color and they're willing to go outside of their race just to connect to somebody and to see if they can find their mate. And that's the reason why they find them. Like, men are quick to say, oh, oh you couldn't find a brother. No, I couldn't find a motherfucking brother. And that's the reason why I prayed about it and I found a man, like I'm supposed to, to marry and have kids. Because I wanted to have kids. So I met a man, a real man, to marry and have kids. It don't, don't it don't matter if he black or not. And the funny thing is, most of these black men that always have a comment to say, or most of these black women that always have a comment to say, oh, you can't find a black man. I'm sorry. Does it let the most of these black men? I wouldn't even date you anyway. I wouldn't date you. And if and if I was single walking down the street, you wouldn't even be trying to holler at me. You only got something to say because you see that I'm with somebody who isn't black. And the same thing with the black females. Oh, you couldn't find a brother? Okay, you quick to tell me that I can't find a brother, but where your brother at? Where your black husband at? Because he sure ain't there. Yeah, we, we know you got a couple kids and you got a baby daddy. And he married. And he ain't even married to somebody who is black. But he's married. So where your black prince is? You want to tell me that why I can't find a black prince? But you can't find one either. You're older than me. You can't find one either. And you still, you still looking. Who's stupid? Who's dumb? Between you and me, who's dumb? Because I'm the one. I got my husband. And I have my kids. And I have another baby on the way. Who's dumb? You or me? Who's the idiot? You. You're the bigger idiot. You're the bigger idiot. Not me. 
Because I have a husband with me who lives with me or who is with me. You you don't. You have to struggle and, and trying to look for somebody. You're either single with no kids looking for somebody or you're single with kids and trying to look for somebody. No, that's why I say look outside of your race. Now, the only thing I do agree with is if you say, I'm you know, no, I want somebody who is a certain um, 